Vamos a efectos ilustrativos volver a nuestro ejemplo. As an illustration, let's go back to our example based on the character Forge's draws, the ragged man who's about to die of thirst in the desert. And let's say this man on the brink of death from thirst has the following scale of values. In first place, what he values most is a glass of water. A glass of water because he is about to expire. And if he drinks that glass of water, any of these, at least he will be able to endure another hour of the sun's rays. In second place, he is so thirsty that what he ranks second is another glass of water. In third place on his value scale, he says, well, if I could drink two glasses of water, my stomach is also killing me because I haven't eaten since yesterday. Third on my value scale is a cluster of dates. If I could eat, then what I'd place fourth on my scale is a third glass of water. And in fifth place, the sun is so strong that I need a hat. In sixth place, the fourth glass of water. And in seventh place, another glass of water. That way, we have five. The first glass of water in the first place, the second glass of water in the second, the third glass of water in the fourth, the fourth glass of water in sixth place on the value scale, and the fifth glass of water in seventh place. Such is the man's value scale. Let's imagine he's dragging himself across the sand with bloody fingernails, and he's on the verge of death. He passes a rock, and suddenly he sees one, two, three, four, five glasses of water. Yippee! It's my lucky day! I'm not going to die! And suppose he reaches out with a trembling hand to grab a glass of water and drink it, but his grip fails him. He drops the glass. The water immediately spills. The burning sand absorbs it like a sponge, and the water evaporates. My question is, the other four glasses are still there. What satisfaction has he lost because the water from that glass has spilled? Has he lost the satisfaction of achieving his first end? No, because he still has four glasses left. The satisfaction of achieving his second end? No, not that either. His sixth? Not that either. If a glass spills, he loses the satisfaction of achieving his seventh end. Everyone sees that clearly, right? And it makes no difference whether the glass that spills is this one or this one. He loses only the satisfaction of achieving his seventh end. Maybe the glass that falls is this one. This law holds true as long as the actor considers the relevant units fully interchangeable with each other, as they are in our example. So, let's recall the three ideas that are essential for understanding marginal utility. First, since means are scarce, we begin by using them to accomplish the ends we value most, and then we apply them to ends we value less. Second, we bring in the concept of the unit of means that is relevant in the context of an action. In this case, the relevant unit is a glass of water. Third, the actor must view the relevant units as fully interchangeable with each other. We have seen that if a glass of water spills, any of the glasses, since the actor subjectively views them as fully interchangeable with each other, the only utility that is lost is the utility that corresponds to the seventh end, the last on the value scale. The very last. We're about ready to understand marginal utility. I'll give you another example. Suppose the thirsty man has four glasses of water, which he found behind the rock. Now, suppose I show up with a glass of water. I've spotted him a mile back, dying of thirst, and I say, you poor devil, I've brought you a glass of water as a gift. Here, take it. Now, instead of four, you have five. What utility does the actor gain as a result of the gift? The utility of the first and most valued end on his value scale? No. Nor that of the second. Nor this one. Nor this one. Because he already had four. He gains the utility that corresponds to the last end on his value scale. Now we are ready to present the law of marginal utility. The law of marginal utility explains how the subjective value of any unit of a good is determined. 
Any relevant unit the actor views as fully interchangeable in the context of an action. El valor de cualquier unidad de bien aislada. The value of any isolated, relevant unit the actor considers fully interchangeable is determined by the utility the last unit of that good provides on the actor's value scale. I repeat, according to the law of marginal utility, the value of each and every unit of a good available to the actor, each of the relevant units viewed as fully interchangeable with each other, any isolated unit, corresponds to the value the actor attaches to the least valued unit of that good on his or her value scale. In other words, the value the last available unit enables the actor to obtain. In fact, the term marginal utility is a translation of the German word Grenznutzen. Nutzen, utility, Grenz, border, margin, edge. We owe this term to Wieser, a second-generation Austrian economist. In short, the utility of the last units available is what determines the value of each and every one of the isolated units available to the actor. What is any isolated glass of water worth to the actor? Any glass of water considered alone. Is it worth the same as the glass that permits him to achieve his first end? No. It's always worth the same as the glass that permits him to achieve his last end. For if he loses or gains one glass, what he loses or gains corresponds to the last end on his value scale. What if he spills three glasses? What does he lose? Clearly, he loses the satisfaction of achieving his seventh, his sixth, and his fourth end, but he can still achieve his first two. It's always the ends at the margin. However, any isolated glass of water, any one of the five glasses alone, has the same value for the actor as the last and least valued end he can achieve on his value scale, with the units available to him. And that, dear students, is known as the law of marginal utility. Marginal.